Hello everyone, welcome to Eye on Africa. Here are your headlines on this Thursday. Heavy rain in more than half a dozen Eastern African countries has killed at least 265 people in the past two months. And with more rain in the forecast, there is now fear over waterborne diseases and the prospect of hunger as crops are destroyed. A former Nigerian governor and a current senator is sentenced to 12 years in jail. He was found guilty of stealing 18 million euros. We'll go live to Abuja in just a moment. And how Ivorian events organizer La Sunday is celebrating its first birthday. We'll have that story later on. But first, relentless rains have been battering several eastern African countries for the past two months, submerging villages and farms, sending raging rivers crashing into houses in Kenya, Somalia, Burundi, Tanzania, South Sudan, Uganda, Djibouti and Ethiopia. According to an AFP tally, at least 265 people have been killed and more than 2 million have been affected. And meteorologists say more rain is in the forecast. Mo Julien has the story. Akobo, in the Jongle state of South Sudan, is still recovering from years of civil conflict. Now the town is facing a disaster that could be equally devastating. Houses and land submerged in water, leaving dozens of families homeless. When we were displaced by the flooding, we felt sad because we had to leave everything behind. We need shelter, we need food. I'm sleeping outside, which isn't good. Humanitarian organizations are providing food, access to medicine and clean water. They expect things to get worse in the next few months. These people are, relied, are going to rely or have been relying for years and years on harvests. Those harvests are likely to be badly affected, so there's going to be less food that they're going to grow themselves and so therefore they might be more dependent on food coming in from outside. More than 420,000 people have had to flee their homes because of flooding in South Sudan, prompting the government to declare a national emergency. Across the region, heavy rains have affected the livelihoods of 2 million people. In Kenya, 132 people have lost their lives. 38 were killed in landslides in Burundi. In eastern Uganda, several bodies were recovered after landslides in villages in the districts of Bududa and Sironko. Experts say the downfall is caused by rising temperatures of waters around East Africa, resulting in higher evaporation and more rain. A tropical storm is expected to hit northeastern Somalia on Friday. At least 58 people have drowned when their boat capsized off the coast of Mauritania. The boat which left the Gambia last week was packed with 150 people, including women and children who were attempting to move to Europe. They were heading for Spain's Canary Islands but tried to approach Mauritania to restock on fuel and food. Local authorities say there are at least 85 survivors, several of which swam to shore and are currently receiving care. Mauritanian authorities have so far recovered 58 drowned bodies. 83 migrants managed to escape by swimming towards the coast. This incident occurred on the so-called Western Mediterranean route, i.e. the route from West Africa to the Canary Islands which ends in continental Europe. Including this incident, almost 400 people have died on the road to the Western Mediterranean. The route is becoming increasingly important. In 2015, there were about 5,000 arrivals in Europe every year from this route, while in 2018, those numbers reached 60,000. A former Nigerian state governor and current senator was found guilty of fraud after misappropriating more than 7.2 billion naira, that's about 18 million euros. It happened while he was serving as governor of Abia state from 1999 to 2007. Orji Uzor Kalu was sentenced to 12 years in prison on Thursday. The judge in the case also ordered that Kalu's airline, which he used to launder the funds, be forfeited to the Nigerian government. Well, for more on the story, let's go live to Abuja and speak to our Sam Olukoya. Sam, good evening. Um, who is this man and how did this happen? Well, uh, Oji Kalu is a well-known politician from Southeast Nigeria. He's been two-term uh, governor in Abia State, uh, currently a senator, a chief whip. Uh, he uh, owns two newspaper organizations, so he's quite a, a well-known uh, person. Uh, how it happened was that uh, he was seen to have siphoned, while, while he was a governor, to have siphoned quite a lot of money from government coffers to the coffers of his pri private business. And uh, eventually, 
they discovered this and uh, put him on trial. This case had been on for 12 years, so we've seen the end of it with uh, his uh, being sentenced to 12 years imprisonment. So 12 years in prison, um, we know now that um, we know that for the for the past few months, President Mohamed Buhari has been launching this anti-corruption crusade. What does today's verdict and sentencing say about that uh, or that, that campaign? Well, his uh, campaign group says, as a senior member of uh, his party, this shows that uh, the president does not tolerate uh, corruption. I mean, they have been celebrating that, saying that the opposition, it puts a lie to what the opposition has been saying, that uh, those who are in the party are always protected. It has to be said here that uh, this particular politician actually was in the opposition and moved to the ruling party. And speculation were at that time that he wanted, because he was facing trial before he defected to the, the ruling party, so there were speculations that he was trying to evade justice. Of course, there are a number of them like that who had moved to the ruling party because uh, they, they wanted to evade justice. So I am not sure this will say so much about uh, the president's uh, war against corruption as his party is uh, trying to claim, because we have so many people who have been accused of corruption and uh, they've not uh, faced trial. I would say rather this shows the level of corruption in Nigeria. This is the seventh governor to be jailed within uh, the last 20 years, and a number of them are actually still facing trial. So it, I, I'm not sure the, pres the, the president has that kind of power to stop everybody from being jailed, given the level of uh, corruption in, in Nigeria. All right, Sam Olokoya in Abuja. Sam, thank you very much. Militants belonging to Boko Haram have kidnapped 17 minors, some as young as 11, in the north of Cameroon, near the border with Nigeria. Police say the group attacked at around 11 p.m. local time, excuse me, and kidnapped 21 people, with four of them managing to escape. The army has launched a rescue operation to bring the children back home. Since beginning 10 years ago, Boko Haram's insurgency and terror attacks have killed at least 27,000 people and displaced 2 million residents. South African Airways has been placed under a state-approved rescue plan in order to avoid the airline's collapse. The company has been in a dire financial situation for years and was hit hard by a week-long strike last month. Praveen Gordon, the Minister for Public Enterprises, insisted this was not a bailout, but that the business rescue would instead lead to a radical restructuring of the airline. The rescue process will be directed by an independent practitioner. Gordon said the government would provide 2 billion rand, or more than 120 million euros, to the state's flag carrier. And vaccine alliance Gavi has announced it will invest $178 million to create a global stockpile of about half a million Ebola vaccines. Gavi is a public-private partnership which includes the World Health Organization, UNICEF and the World Bank, among others. The investment will be provided between now and 2025. There are similar stockpiles for vaccines against yellow fever, meningitis and cholera. The Ebola stockpile will be available to all countries, but only developing countries will be able to get the vaccines for free. Health officials say this investment could prevent future outbreaks from spreading too much. Finally, Ivorian events organizer La Sunday is coming up on its first birthday. Since December 2018, the group has arranged regular parties that have left Abidjan dancing all night long. Its latest mini-festival brought over 5,000 revelers together its secret? Offering an appealing concept and truly alternative music. This report by Thaisbourg, Marc-Antoine Maison and Frank Hersey. The finishing touches before the festivities begin. Faisal Azraq is one of the founders of La Sunday, which started up a year ago. It all came about one Sunday when he and a group of friends got together to make their own fun over a few drinks. So it started with this little get-together of about 50 people and then grew and grew until by July we had 6,500 people attending. The hedonism is reserved just for Sundays, usually once a month from late afternoon to late. The concept straddles contemporary art, interior design and above all, music you won't hear anywhere else. It's an inclusive event, setting itself apart from the somewhat stiff nightclubs and highly informal maki bars 
all blaring mainstream hits. When you go to a nightclub here, you've got to really put yourself on show, dress well, basically show off. At La Sunday, you just come to have fun and it's great. The majority of Maki bars play the same coupé décalé and no other music. Most music fans coming to La Sunday want to hear rap or soul. You'll see that in Abidjan there's not enough events like this, so everyone rushes over when there's something that brings everybody together. Night falls over the Fondation Donway Gallery, where the event celebrates its first birthday. Partygoers take things up a notch. La Sunday has already made a name for itself in Ivory Coast, and the organizers are now setting their sights further afield. That's what we're all working towards. Every time the whole emerging creative scene gets together, it really puts Abidjan on the map. Our ambition now for 2020 is to go international. It's one success after another for the collective, who are now going all out to arrange a full music festival on the 22nd of December. Abidjan will keep swaying those hips, and not just on Sundays. That does it for this edition of Ion Africa. Thank you very much for watching. Coming up, Life from Paris continues with Marco, and stay tuned.